right now, and I'm going to just pull in the sacred one. Whoever is here to guide me. So, hello. I've been guided to uh, give this talk on meditation. It seems to, over time, it's held with it something that the enlightened ones do and perfect. And for me, myself, you know, I've struggled with med meditation because I've taken this um, pressure on, I've taken this idealism of what it should be on until recently. So, um, I want to share with you. So, meditation. You know, I've, I started to turn around and say, you know what, meditation is just something I do. It's, it's something I do when I want to sit with myself. And meditation and mindfulness are pretty much a very similar. They're one and the same, really. Mindfulness is to be mindful. So with mindfulness, you will focus. Um, it could be you're focusing on breath. You could do a walking meditation. So with mindfulness, you're focusing on the, the leaves you might see on the floor, the sounds as your feet walk and the crunch on those leaves or, you know, the sound of the water as you walk by. Or it could be as you're walking, the sound of people talking, or the sound of someone crying, or the sound of someone arguing in the distance. It is to bring the mind to focus. So I wanted to um, go into meditation, and basically I've been asked to call it meditation for dummies. But, um, in, in fact, you know, <laughs> I'm not calling anyone a dummy, but it's it's meditation. I've been asked to go into and describe it from my point of view. And there might be other people who come up with other different perspectives. And that's the beauty of life. We all have different perspectives. And if this resonates with you, then that's just fine. Um, if it doesn't resonate, um, then, um, you know, thank you for watching so far. So with meditation, as I described, it's it's something which we want to focus. We want to bring ourselves to focus, which is so hard. We have so much chatter going on. We've got our ego telling us what we should do when it's really what we shouldn't do. We have that little voice that's actually telling us what we should do. But we were, we're like, we're confused. We're like, are we sure that's what we should do? And we can have visuals, we can have sensations. And it's like, what do I believe? Am I making this up? Do I believe this? So, you know, a good thing with meditation is you, there's different, different forms, you know, there's breath work where you can concentrate on the breath, as I said, but one I like to do to be able to get people to real, to relax, first of all, is to focus by, and it doesn't matter if there's noise in the background because a lot of people say, I haven't got time to meditate. It's too noisy. I can't find a quiet place. If there's noise in the background, even better. Because then you're going to teach yourself to sort of just phase that out. And that means you can meditate wherever you are. There can be no excuses because that's what it is, right? You know, <laughs> we like to make up these excuses, this resistance. It's like our ego knows. It knows that we that this is going to be good for us and it hangs on, it hangs on to what was and it doesn't want us to move forward. So yeah, if there's noise around, even better. So a good thing to do is just sit and as we sit, we want to begin to focus, just being still brings a lot of sensations to the body. So it's a nice way to start. Nothing, you don't have to do nothing more than do this. Just sit. There's noises going on in the background. It's okay. It's 
start to feel into the body. You don't even have to close your eyes, just keep your eyes open. You know, when you want to feel into the body, maybe close your eyes so you're not so distracted by the sights. And a good way to start it off is maybe, let's feel into the feet. What does the feet feel like? And then you can move up to the legs. Let's feel into the legs. What does the legs? And we can do this scan working all the way up. Um, I might post it actually, uh, Sue post this beginning bit, but this is generally a chat, so I don't want to go into a meditation now. But once you're in that state where you've scanned all the way up, your legs, your thighs, your hips, because there's a lot of negative energy we carry. We carry a lot of energy from trauma and it's trapped. So we can bring our awareness to these points through our body, whether it's our hands, our arms, our shoulders, heads, our eyes, our throats, our jaw, our chest, you know, work, work your way around. And we can feel the sensations and then we can look for the best sensation, so the most relaxed sensation and find it within ourselves and when we find it within ourselves we can then ask for that sensation to just spread its way around wherever there may be any tension. So this is one way we can sit down and we can do this every morning and it's meditation. You're concentrating and you're focusing. And so we move on. So there's a lot of guided meditations on YouTube I'm starting to post them. I recommend whatever you're drawn to, listen to. Make sure you get the voice right because there's nothing worse than getting through a meditation and you're like, mm, no, I can't sell with this. The, the voice is doing my head in. Can't sell with this at all. So there's nothing wrong with like zooming forward a bit in a meditation you find, seeing if the voice resonates with your being. And if it does, go back to the beginning, put it on. It saves a lot of time. And you can do this. So, um, so what next do I need to speak about? So we have these guided meditations and the guided meditations are a really good way to start. They take the pressure away. You're allowing someone to guide you with their voice and be able to carry you deep into your psyche because that's what meditations are. And the thing with the guided meditations, they rely a lot on visualization. And with visualization, I think you can remember being a child and your imagination carried you, you know, um, I was born 1980, so I grew up reading a lot of books, uh, especially if I got grounded, read a book, no telly. And so a books used to carry, you know, I'd be able to create this picture and books used to be able to carry me away into another world. And so we're calling back that imagination. We're, we're freely allowed as adults to use our imagination to its full capacity. And that's what we're asking of you through a guided meditation. And it's not, we don't, what we all find is you'll be like, you're meditating, you're like, mm, am I making that up? Is that meant to be like that? Hmm. Oh, that seems a bit strange, it's a bit weird. Because what happens is that something takes over. And then your visualization flows. It flows and carries and shows you what needs to be shown. Or you hear a voice and you hear this voice and it might be your voice, it might be another voice. And so the, uh, the person who's uh, facilitating the guided meditation may say to you, um, I, oh, I'll use for an instant an angel one. So we call upon the angels and the angels has something to tell you. What does the angel have to tell you? And you hear something can automatically be going, that's not real, I made that up. What I'm asking for you is to trust that the information you receive is there to give you guidance and it's there to give you clarity. It's there to help. 
So we trust, we just allow it to flow. We allow that them negating thoughts to, I like to put wings on, wings on these thoughts and let them fly off, you know? There's nothing wrong with them. Let's try not to force them away. And it's like, okay, I'll deal with you later. Postman. <laughs> Um, so we have that come up with guided meditation which puts a lot of people off if your thoughts do come in you can return yourself as in your thoughts as in what you know the shopping list someone who's annoyed you you can return to your breathing return to focusing on your breath to allow you to go back into the meditation or you can um, a dog, either a dog taking a walk, your thoughts are that dog taking a walk in the park, or the bird flying off. So some people like to meditate um, with drums and do drum journeying. And I am, um, I am a medicine woman, so this is the way I tend to do it. I can do do any, but I also. Uh, if people working with people, I will do guided meditations. So I'm just going to get my drum because I forgot to get my drum. And so what I'm going to do. China, I'm recording. See, we're all normal people, as my 20 year old daughter. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna take you I'm just gonna always ask and call upon the spirit of the drum, which I have connected myself and made myself one with, um, for me to be able to play and use. And so with the journeying, it's a really nice shamanic way to carry. So what we're doing is using a repetitive sound. It's a really nice way to get you into a nice trance state. And this way it tends to take you deeper. You can either do these guided, or if you want to give it a go by yourself, and once you've got the idea of how a guided meditation works, so you step through that door, so you step through that door, take yourself into the meadow, just let go, just let the meditation flow to where Absolutely love it. So I will be posting some meditations up on my drums. So that's another way we can meditate. Um, it also makes you feel very happy. <laughs> um, so another way also, because sound, we are energetic beings. And sound healing, sound is healing. It's made up of frequencies. It gives us what we need. And so I have some rattles. I have the rattle that I use. 
um, which I used to call it, and I also use it uh, through shamanic ceremonies to cleanse and heal. But I also have So if you don't want to drum, and I bet most of you watching this have got stuff lying around which you brought a long time ago and you didn't know that you could use it for this purpose. You didn't know that shamanically over there waiting for you. That is running through your being, it's running through your blood. Your ancestors have made you buy it, but you didn't listen to them. So another good way is listening to the sound of the rattle. And I go with your gut instincts, whatever feels. So you don't have to sit still for a meditation. It's allowing the sound to focus and send the healing that you need. And I'm feeling this right in the heart chakra at the moment. And obviously I've got my rose quartz there. It's self-love me doing this video, so that's why I'm feeling it. Pushing myself out of my comfort zone and doing what I'm guided to do. And the favourite bit. Silence after the sound stops. Gonna grab a tissue. Right. So so medica meditations can be done in silence. You can sit there. And you can focus on your breathing. And you haven't done, I said about focusing on breathing, but I don't think we've done a breath. So I'm just going to take you through a little breathing exercise and how you can focus on your breathing. So when we breathe to relax, uh, one way we can do it is by breathing through the nose. And so by breathing through the nose, we want to breathe very, very slowly. So, and we want to, as we breathe, we're not, usually we breathe like that, trying to fill our lungs up, but we're breathing from the belly. And as we breathe, we're passing the air through and it's traveling all the way down and we're allowing our stomach to inflate like a balloon. And then we like to hold, hold the breath. Once breathing in. And you can do it for whatever amount of time is comfortable for you. But when we exhale, we want to make sure that the count of exhaling is more than the count of the breath in, and the count of the holding is more than the count of the breath in. Sometimes, but that's how I work. And so we can breathe in for four. out through the mouth and we're allowing stomach to deflate so that's another way you can just sit there and do that i remember when i first started meditating there was some there was um especially working with visualizations i used to visualize uh one to four and with each number there was an element so one uh i can't remember what order it was in but say it's fire so I used to visualize this number one in flames, two water, moving like a body of water, three air, you know, moving like the air. Just visualize however you want, four earth. So it would be like roots and trees coming up from it and soil. And then I'd go back to four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four. And I would do this for the smallest amount of time. So meditation isn't about sitting there for an hour's on end like a monk with your mind still. 
you can work towards that if that's what you want. We release DMT naturally and there are ways and amazing things you can see by doing it that way. But to be able to be stress free and cope um, with everyday life or maybe tap in and tune in to an answer that you want, um, release confusion to ground yourself. There are so many different ways and it really does involve visualization and it involves focus. And then the voice that comes in, in your head that tells you what to do, will be a clear, wise counsel, rather than coming from a place of fear and ego. So, um, is that it? I got a bit distracted thinking, should I stop now? But um, I think that's it. You know, meditation is personal. Don't let anyone tell you how to do anything, even though I have spent this video telling you how you could. It's down to you. Everyone has a way of doing something that works for them. This is me giving you some ideas about what could work for you and what could help. So, um, you know, start the day off. Start the day off with start the morning off you know with five minutes of or two minutes of sitting there maybe doing some breathing um do guided meditations they help you till you get to the point where you don't need to do them anymore because what happens is the person will guide you but you're doing their voice starts to irritate you because they're interfering with your journey Another thing as well with guided meditations, don't worry if you don't remember uh, what you hear, because it just means you're going very deep and it's all working subconsciously. You're still taking yourself into that place of conscious awareness, of focus, of relaxation, and you're doing the work that needs to be done subconsciously. And also don't worry if the person that's guiding you, you're doing something completely different. It just means, you know, you're quite confident within your journey and you're doing or going where you need to go for you. After all, the person is just a guide. It is just a guided meditation. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. And um, I look forward to posting some more meditations and drumming for you. And like and subscribe, that would be great. <laughs> Sounds so strange saying that, but yeah, like and subscribe, that would be great. And you can find me um, on Facebook with, I offer online services and once Corona's over, well not over, but you know, once lockdown's over, we can, um, begin to allow some one-to-one -one services to come in but a lot I work metaphysically so I can work a lot online and that would be through Mammy Healer N-A-M-I Healer um, but you can also search Lexi's Attic um, Energy Healing and it will come up with that also and there is a list of my services so um, take care have a good day and you're going to do great and you're going to see the magic unfold. Meditation leads into the magic unfolding and the signs being shown to you every day, everywhere. So, have a great day. Blessings to you all.